go to google and type rathods is then you can see our website rathods is academy there you have to click on login or register in the blue color so if you have not registered yet, you have to click on do not have account and fill the details so after once you have login click on the courses there you can see course list and in this course list you can see wide range of courses hi this is usha welcome to rathod's is classes today in this lecture we are going to see current affairs of 21st june 2022 so actually so there is a one important event on this day so every year we are celebrating this 21st june as international yoga day so first of all i wish you a very happy international yoga day for all of you and try to incorporate this yoga okay in your daily life at least just 15 to 20 minutes a day yoga will helpful to refresh yourself and it will be helpful to re-energize your day and once you started doing meditation yoga yes you can see a drastful health benefits in for you okay so now let us try to see today's quote today's quote is again motivational quote so life doesn't require that we be the best only that we try our best so life doesn't require that we be the best but only that we mainly try to make the best and now let us try to see the first topic it is regarding job creation so as you all know one important challenge that we are mainly facing in our economy is like unemployment right so now we are going to talk about this principle of employment generation so at the center of job creation so this is the title of this article and we are going to talk about what is this unemployment and the data regarding unemployment in india and what is the way forward so actually if you see this article so it is like a political article so we are not going to see any political ideology so we are going to see some concepts which are important from our upsc point of view and this topic it is important from your mains especially not from your prelims so if you see the job creation so what happened recently our prime minister of india that is government of india it mainly announced that 10 lakh government jobs 10 lakh government jobs will be provided in the next 18 months on mission mode okay so because of this it mainly sent four messages to the people so now let us try to see what are those messages so first one is creation of employment is indeed a problem and it can no longer be hidden from public disclosure so yes even people they know about this unemployment scenario in india and here creation of employment it is a big problem so it is a one thing which already the people knows and next one is if you're talking about private sector especially some modern sectors like service sector and manufacturing sector they are mainly dominated by this mnc companies now that is multinational companies and these companies you are not creating many jobs so it is one important problem and if you are talking about especially it sector information technology sector they are mainly creating modern zig economy okay and they are mainly creating jobs but which kind of jobs you are creating you are creating either high skilled jobs or very low skilled jobs so this is also one important problem so because of that here people you are mainly looking for this government jobs and next one is government in this nehruian scheme of development they occupied an important place in labor market and now here national democratic alliance that is an nda government which is mainly came up with this ideology and they are mainly focusing on some important problems that we are facing in our economy that is inflation and we are focusing on unemployment and underemployment etc and the last important thing which is mainly focused here is here NDA government which has blown 2024 general elections so because of this they are coming up with with this type of announcement okay so if you're talking about unemployment so what is the meaning of unemployment especially students who are beginners they might not know about this concept so if you're talking about unemployment it mainly occurs when person who actively seeks em employment but is unable to do that employment okay so unable uh, if you're talking about unemployment which mainly occurs when pa when person actively want to do the job but he is not get that job so unemployment it is indicator of countries 
okay economy's health so to see the economy health of a country yes we will be looking at this indicator that is unemployment rate so unemployment rate which mainly calculated by dividing number of unemployed people number of unemployed people by total number of people by total number of people in labor force okay so here what is this unemployment rate so it is nothing but the number of unemployed people they are present to the total number of people in the labor force so this which mainly gives this unemployment rate so we are talking about data regarding unemployment in india so here we need to know about this cmie data so according to center for monitoring indian economy which mainly said that about 53 million 53 million unemployed people they are present in india and it is according to data of 2021 december so by this december 2021 in india we have 53 million unemployed people and out of this 53 million large proportion is mainly women so women are large proportion and even the cmi data which mainly says that 35 million of these unemployed work they are actively seeking work and about 17 million they are willing to work but not actively seeking work that means they are searching work but they are not searching work and next one is according to cmi a women made about 23% okay that is about 8 million of this 35 million unemployed who are mainly looking for work in december 2021 and at the same time despite not actively looking for work about 53% of the 17 million women they were mainly passively unemployed and 9 million women they were willing to work out of the 17 million people so what are the causes for this unemployment in india so this is very important and you have to know that so first one is there is a rapid population growth is seen so because of this the people who are entering into this labor force is high and we are seeing this expansion of this labor force in india and we are seeing our economy is under developed economy so because of that it is not providing much opportunities and next one is slowly growing agriculture sector agriculture which sector which is mainly giving employment especially for the rural youth so it is mainly growing very slowly because of some impact of climate change that has some impact on food production etc and we are having a flawed system of education so what are the books that we are seeing they are not updated books and if you are comparing with education in india with education with other countries yes they are more advanced than compared to of india and next one is there is a missing manpower planning in india and there is deterioration of village industries especially cottage industries so which was the idea which mainly proposed by mahatma gandhi so here there is a deterioration of this village industries are seen and that led to increasing of job loss and whatever the technology that you are using that is not appropriate and there is a very very slow growing of industrial sector and there is some impact because of this covid 19 pandemic as well and even if you are talking about this investment private investment which is mainly slowed in labor intensive industries so these are some important causes for this rise of unemployment in india so we are talking about quantity and quality of jobs so here employment it is not merely about the numbers and as well as growth figures but we need to go for creation of decent work and as well as sustainable labor market so government need to go for focusing on this sustainable sustainable labor market and as well as we need to focus on especially creation of decent work creation of decent work and as well as sustainable labor market so here here government of india need to focus on the sustainable labor market and even decent work so this is one important thing that government of india that need to focus on and even and even india is also committed as a member of united nations and even international labor organization so it need to focus on creation of the sustainable labor market 
and here government role in employment generation has entered into popular disclosure and it need to come up with discussions regarding policy formation and how to create employment opportunities and even government need to re establish role as a principal employment generator and we need to come up with the jobs in its ministries and central public sector enterprises okay and we need to provide employment especially for the low skilled people through this especially mg narega scheme so we can go for expansion on this mg narega scheme in the rural areas and even in the urban areas okay so this is about this topic in detail and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding sterilite problem so actually this sterilite is a copper melting okay proper melting company so now let us try to see this topic actually if you are a beginner you might not know about what happened to this sterilite copper company in 2018 so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so we are going to see what is the issue so what is the issue which is mainly happening now and what are the impacts of closure of the sterilite company and what is the impact on environment and what is the way forward so these all dimensions that we are going to discuss so this topic it is important from your means not from prelims once again actually this topic is important from your environment and ecology and which mainly comes under your gs paper 3 so it is important from your means not from your prelims so what happened here so in 2018 some incident which mainly happened so in 2018 may about 13 people were dead so why so sterilite copper of this thootukudi in tamil nadu which has become a moral issue after police firing on protesters resulted in the death of 13 people in 2018 so in 2018 there were many protesters they mainly protesting against the sterilite company and they are saying that so because of the sterilite company that is having some impact on environment and that is leading to pollution so there is a need of closure of the sterilite company and protesters they are mainly doing protest and suddenly here police firing that happened so in this police firing about uh, 13 people they were killed so from that time onwards so there was a closure of the sterilite company and over some 20 years of this plant operation so company had violated many pollution regulation okay many pollution regulations had been violated by the company and faced at least two consistent protest against the pollution from this plant okay and actually case went to madras uh, sorry high court okay madras high court and later on the case which mainly go to supreme court and now the discussion which are mainly happening on the merits and as well the merits of this so actually if you are talking about impact of closure so this is the image of that sterilite company during the night so it is looking very beautiful right so if you are talking about the impact of the closure so with the closure of this plant so india has been forced to become a net importer of this copper after 18 years after nearly 18 years again india became a net importer of copper so after closure of this plant and after this closure which mainly resulted the complete evaporation of livelihood of the people of this region so every year the people who are present in this region local people they used to work in this company but once this company closed means that they will be lost in livelihood okay so because of this here because of this closure of this company that led to complete evaporation of livelihoods of this entire region and even covid 19 pandemic which has been a worst if impact on this industry and if you are talking about what is the impact on environment from this sterilite company so copper production whenever we are going for copper production which is mainly highly a polluting process and we need to follow some stringent regulations to reduce the pollution but over two decades that is over 20 years farmers and fishermen who are present in this communities uh, they mainly raised their concern regarding the pollution of ground water and as well as sea water because of this uh, company and there is also huge amount of toxic gases that are mainly released into atmosphere okay so there is a release of huge amount of toxic gases into atmosphere and they have been claiming that the factory has severely affected their livelihoods through to chemical discharge okay so what happened whenever any company which is mainly running means so whatever the waste that are generated in this company so they will be having some chemicals especially if you are talking about this copper company copper industry so whenever you are going for this copper industry so we will be getting lot of amounts of metals as by products or like 
we can see like impurities that are present in that so and so over so for example iron arsenic cadmium nickel etc so all these are very very toxic and whenever we are going for a sample testing okay nearby this area and around the plant so they found that dangerous uh, amounts of this iron uh, arsenic cadmium and as well as nickel they are present so they are very very toxic and next one is water sample they collected vicinity shows high level of sulfate and as well as calcium there is high level of sulfate and as well as calcium which is mainly seen in the water samples as well okay sterilite has contaminated water supplies so water is unfit for the direct consumption of agriculture so whatever the water which is present around this plant so those water which is mainly contaminated with uh, with the components like uh, iron etc so because of this this contaminated water will not be suitable for drinking for purposes and even for the agriculture purposes as well because we can see these heavy metals or heavy toxic materials they will be transporting from one level to another level and it is mainly going for bio accumulation bio magnification right so this concept that we will be studying in our environment and ecology and in 2013 after a severe leak of sulfuric acid that led to residents suffering various symptoms of poisoning there have been demands for the closure of the plants okay so in 2013 so after several after several leak of the sulfuric acid that may lead to the residents who are mainly suffering various uh, symptoms of poisoning and there have been demands for the closure of the plant as well and finally supreme court which mainly found that yes here this sterilite company is a culprit and supreme court imposed a fine of rupees 100 crores and what is the way forward what can be done so we need to go for upgradation or we need to go for modernization of operating procedures and as well as operating machines in these plants and as well as smelters so which can release with lower levels of toxicity so with which can whenever we are going for modernizing of technology or upgradation of technology yes we can go for decreasing of levels of this toxicity and this process can be applied not just to the sterilite plant but also even other copper smelters which are present across the country and next one is we need to focus okay we need to focus on many company uh, many companies they need to hesitate whenever they are saying that they need to modernize their equipment because it is mainly incurring heavy cost so that government need to come forward to provide subsidies in terms of equipment import and next one is older plants they have history of polluting the surrounding area so where metal dust it, it may have spread uh, toxic pollutants as well so we need to focus on that and next one is we need to improve the quality of operations in the plants okay we need to go for changing of infrastructure etc we need to go for modernization of infrastructure and we need to come up with redesigning and replacing this good quality of this uh, replacing with this good quality of equipment so in this way we can go for technological upgradation so this is about this topic in detail and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding agni weeds that is agni path scheme agni path scheme so this topic is important in from your gs paper two point of view under policies and programs of government so this topic is important from your gs paper two already we discussed this topic number of times and once again we are going to see this topic so as you all know throughout the country so many people you are doing protest against this agni pulse scheme so in spite of this despite of this army which mainly issued the first notification for the recruitment of this Agni weeds under this Agni Path scheme. Okay, and this process which is going to be begin in July month. Okay, and army said that they are going to recruit about 40,000 Agni weeds in two batches this year. And the registration will be open from this July 1st. And the first recruitment rally is expected to be held in this mid-August. So these are some important things which mainly said. And if you're talking about some details or facts regarding this Agni Pad scheme, as you all know, this Agni Pad scheme, it is a temporary employment scheme. It is not a permanent employment scheme. And it mainly launched by government of India. And it mainly focusing that young minds days of the country in the army, okay, while acquiring the skills during their process. So on this Agni Pad scheme, here Agni weeds, they will be enrolled in the forces under this respective service acts for a period of four years. So for a period of four years, they are going to give the employment opportunity. And you, they are mainly selected under this Agnipad scheme. 
they will known as uh, agni weeds they are known to be agni weeds and this agni weeds they allows this patriotic and motivated youth to serve this armed forces for a period of 4 years okay and if you are talking about what will be the benefits of this agni pad scheme so if you are talking about especially for youth so under this scheme they will be getting opportunity to serve the to serve the country here okay and we can also attract young talent from the society and we can mainly train them to be skilled disciplined motivated and as well as manpower into the society and next important advantage here is for armored forces so this scheme which mainly encourages youth profile of armored forces and to provide lease or, or lease of josh and as well as uh, jazba okay so while sometimes bring out to this transformational shift towards more tech uh, savvy and as well as armored forces so for armored forces they are getting this youthful people they will be having extra josh and as well as jazba so that the transformation shift will be very easy and next one is for nation so nation would immensely benefit infusion of this highly inspired youth with a deep understanding of self discipline diligence and as well as focus so that will be helpful for adequately skilled and if you're talking about concerns the first one here is temporary nature of job the job will be given for only four years but not for the till retirement so because of this is one cause of concern and next one is future in uncertainty or insecurity yes certain future of this agni, agni weeds they mainly after come out of this military after four years of service in case they are mainly having some concerns regarding protesting of youth and next one is fear of favoritism so after completion of this four years about 25 percentage okay about 25 percentage of this agni weeds they will be launched in the military on permanent basis that is they are going to get this permanent commission but not all and next one is lack of commitments towards army so as agni weeds they are uh, there in the army and short term ba basis it is possible that they will not have same level of commitment as a permanent member of army has so whenever a permanent member of army has what are the benefits that are benefits that are no, not going to get by this agni weeds so these are some important issues because of this we can see the protests are happening throughout the country so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic title says rare dragonfly spotted in kerala for first time so this article is important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes into your GS paper 3 and you can get this type of topics in your prelims not from your mains. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you see context it mainly says that dragonfly enthusiastic they have recorded presence of rare dragonfly. Okay actually this dragonfly which is mainly seen in Maharashtra for the first time it is mainly seen in Karnataka in this Kerala. So if you see the details, it mainly says that spiny horn tail. So this is the name of that dragonfly, which is mainly seen in Maharashtra and which mainly discovered in Western Ghats. And this species which is mainly endemic to this Western Ghats in Maharashtra, which mainly seen in this Kerala for the first time. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next article. It is regarding India-Australia relations. So Australia seeks to revitalize Indo-Pacific ties. So now let us try to see this topic in a great detail. It is important from your GS paper to under international nations and you can expect prelims and as well as mains based questions from this topic. So if you see context, it mainly says that India is one of the Australia's closest security partner. So India is one of the Australia's closest security partners and the government is focused on revitalizing Australia's historically deep engagement with our partners across this Indo-Pacific region. So this is the thing which mainly said by Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister of Australia. So here they are going to have a visit to India that is from June 20 to uh, June 23. So because of this year, Australia's uh, Prime Minister, that is Deputy Prime Minister and as well as Australia's Defence Minister, they said that they want to come up with revitalizing relations between India and Australia. So if you're talking about details, it mainly says that. So this is the first high level visit from Australia after formation of new government under Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. 
and actually you know that just two days before quad leaders summit in tokyo so where our prime minister he mainly met australian counterparts so defense and security cooperation between india and australia they had been significantly improved in the in some past few years and we are also coming up with bilateral as well as at multilateral levels we are having good relations with australia so as you all know that rule based international order which has brought peace and as well as prosperity in this indo pacific region and australia which mainly stands for work closer with india and is also going to support india regarding open inclusive and as well as resilient indo pacific region so if we're talking about history of india australia relations so it mainly goes dates back to 1941 So Australia and India they established diplomatic relations even in this pre-independence period of India. So we came up with opening of trade office in Sydney in 1941, and up after that in 1945, India's first High Commissioner to Australia he arrived in Canberra, and later on in 1962 a noticeable warming of relations was observed. so australia supporting india during its border dispute with china and in 1985 a visit by australian foreign minister marked beginning of more solid and varied relationship between india and australia and in 1992 a solid base to broaden and deepen in relationship was laid with the establishment of australia indian council so they came up with this establishment of australia india council and in 2009 recently we came up with a strategic partnership okay between the two countries so if you are talking about areas of cooperation between india and australia so first we need to talk about strategic partnership yes in 2009 india and australia they mainly came up with the strategic partnership and they also came up with this joint declaration joint declaration regarding security cooperation and further it may be elevated to comprehensive strategic partnership in year 2020 and if you're talking about leaders visit with virtual summit yes prime ministers from the both the nations they participated in this india australia leaders virtual summit in 2020 and there they discussed about bilateral strategic partnership right and they also came up with number of uh, memorandum of understandings in different areas like maritime cooperation indo pacific region defense cyber security education mining water resource management etc so in these all areas they mainly came up with signing of memorandum of understanding and this one is quad leaders virtual summit so prime minister of india australia japan and president of usa they participated for mutual cooperation they participated for this mutual cooperation and foreign ministers framework dialogue they came up with this and they are mainly focusing on improving of bilateral uh, relations and this will be held annually that is every year and if you are talking about civil nuclear cooperation yes between india and australia we came up with the civil nuclear cooperation and it is mainly signed in year 2014 and this agreement which mainly came into force in 2015 and this agreement which mainly provides a framework for new trade in energy they are mainly focusing on new trade in energy that is between australia and as plus india and if you are talking about other bilateral exercises so australia and india they committed to working together for enhanced maritime cooperation they worked on this enhanced maritime cooperation and they have mainly come up with one important bilateral exercise that is aus index in year 2015 and we also have exercise pitch black okay it is a biennial that is every 2 years it will be conducting and next one is so both the countries they also came up with this aus austra hin so it is like a special forces of army exercise and if you are talking about next article which is mainly talking about what are the new challenges that we are facing in our indian economy which mainly highlighted by our finance minister so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you are talking about context it mainly says that india is facing some near term challenges okay especially in managing its physical deficit and even we are mainly focusing on economic growth and even inflation and how to contain or how to reduce this current account deficit 
okay so these are some important problems that we are facing that is sustaining how to sustain our economic growth physical deficit inflation current account deficit etc so if you are talking about some more important details which are mainly given are so near term challenges they need to be managed carefully so we need to focus on that challenges carefully and we need to focus on macroeconomic stability in our country and many countries across the world especially these developed countries they also facing similar situations for example if you are talking about us they are also facing inflation which is more than 8 percentage and they also came up with increasing of interest rate by the federal bank of usa so in the same way india is also facing the same challenges and india which is very much relatively better when we are comparing with the financial sector stability with the other countries and next important point here is so india's medium term growth prospects they mainly remain bright as spent up capacity expansion in the private sector okay and even they are focusing on capital formation employment generation etc and increase in the fiscal deficit that may cause current account deficit and we are mainly uh, see that whenever there is increasing of this cad there is current account deficit then our imports will become costier and depreciation of this rupee will be seen right so here imported components of high retail inflation mainly because of increasing of global crude oil prices and increasing of edible oil prices increasing of vegetable prices and as well as cereals prices so these mainly contributed for inflation so these are some important things which are mainly given in this article and now let us try to see the importance of today that is international day of yoga so we celebrate this international day of yoga on 21st june so if you are talking about yoga yoga is nothing but it is a set of asanas or poses that mainly focuses on flexibility and breath work and even strengthening of our human body so we are focusing on flexibility breathing exercises and strengthening of our human body so people often practice yoga to find some mental wellness in addition to our physical benefits so we are mainly focusing on mental wellness and as well as physical benefits and if you are talking about international yoga day 2022 theme so this year the theme here is yoga for humanity and this is eighth international yoga day so if you are talking about history of yoga so it is mainly segregated into four primary eras there is pre classical vedic and classical period post classical and as well as modern period So if we're talking about one by one, you will be getting chronology of this yoga. So in the pre-classical Vedic Vedas, so here yoga which mainly originated some five thousand years ago. Okay, and according to Indian government, especially Ministry of External Affairs, they mainly says that yoga which mainly developed uh, by this Indus Saraswati civilization in northern India. That is around two thousand seven hundred BC. Because it starts the one Sanskrit word that is used, which mainly means yoga, which mainly derives from the meaning that is to join, to unite. Okay, which is mainly mentioned in Rig Veda itself. So we can see the history of this yoga, which mainly dates back to more than five thousand years, and it is in classical period, which is between five hundred to eight hundred AD, five hundred BC to eight hundred AD. So the classical new text. they are systematically laid out the ways to practice yoga so we came up with this yoga sutras okay they are mainly attributed uh, to the sage patanjali in ancient tamilakam okay so the next one is post classical period so yogis with this period uh, within this period they used to describe yoga as a bodily centered yoga practices for example tantra yoga hatha yoga etc that will helps will mainly to improve one's personality or one's physicality and next one is modern period so in late in 1800s yoga teachers they began to travel to the different parts of the world and they started sharing their teachings of yoga for example swami vivekananda in 1893 and people were also helped progress of yoga they were like tirumalai krishnamachari and swami sivananda and as well as indra devi etc and if you are talking about why we are celebrating this yoga day on this 21st june because here united nation proclaimed this 21st june as international yoga day because we are mainly choosing this date because it is one of the longest day so actually regarding this june 21st there was one question in the recent prelims 
okay you have to remember that and now let us try to see yesterday's questions the first one it is regarding which articles under indian constitution that mean it deals with the provision of uh, protection of development of backward class communities Article 15, 16, 46 and 38, all these are mainly present, okay? And you are focusing on development of backward class community. And the next question it is regarding Anglo-Indians. So, consider the following statements, okay? So, consider the following statements regarding the provision of Anglo-Indians under the Lok Sabha. So, if you are talking about Anglo-Indians, so president has mandatory, but it is not mandatory, to nominate two members of this Anglo-Indian community to Lok Sabha if they are not properly represented. And next one is, Governor of sta State can nominate one member from this Anglo-Indian community to the State Assembly if the community is not adequately represented. Yes, so first statement is incorrect, only the second statement is correct. So, correct option is two only. And if you are talking about today's questions, today's from today onwards we are going to see questions from the history. So many students are asking that why only polity questions. So I switched on to the history questions. So first question is regarding humane thumb and next one is regarding Japti system. So try to give me the answer for these questions in the comment box. And now I want to make a small announcement. We in Rathod size we came up with this foundational course for 2020 to 2023 and 2024. And this is a two years of course. So, you can visit our website Rathos IS Academy and you can watch demo videos, three demo videos which is a free of cost and after watching the demo videos, if you want to take entire foundation course, you can take and if you want to take individual courses, you can take individual courses. Okay, so this uh, course it is very, very useful especially for the aspirant who are beginners and as well as who gave their attempts because we are mainly focusing on conceptual clarity. So, this conceptual clarity is very, very important to clear prelims and as well as means. Okay, and if you have any doubt, you can call me on this number 8074765513. And this is also WhatsApp number. You can call me on this WhatsApp number also. Okay, you can message me on this WhatsApp number. And so, that I will be, uh, I will be resolving your queries. And one more thing here is we are mainly providing some important current affairs also in current telegram channel. So here you will be getting PDFs and as well as some important updates on current affairs and recent current affairs and some facts we are mainly posting in telegram channel. So try to join the telegram channel link is given in description box. And now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So this is our today's Hindu date here is June 21st and this is Delhi edition. So first article it is regarding Agni Pad scheme. I discussed this topic and if you move over here you can see at these Rajasthan schools English skills or medium. So here they mainly came up with internship in spoken English which mainly launched for teachers in this uh, Sri Ganga Nagar. Okay and it is mainly duplicated in even other districts as well. So Mahatma Gandhi English medium schools they started by Congress government in Rajasthan. They are much much uh, fanfare three years ago now here we are mainly seeing that the schools have become very popular with the number of applications reserved for the admissions in the beginning of this academic year okay because they are mainly focusing on development they are mainly focusing on fluency of english and if you move to the city page you can see you can leave the city page and even states page and you can directly see this article prime minister promises sub-urban rail in 40 months so it is about Bangalore city of dreams and if you move forward here you can see Kerala to give maximum water to this Tamil Nadu actually this article just mainly talking about Sirwani reservoir so let me know on which river this reservoir is present so that is important from your UPSC prelims point of view I discussed about this rare dragonfly species and in this editorial page I discussed about uh, about this topic uh, that is regarding uh, center of job creation. So, there is one article regarding this uh, judgment of Allahabad High Court. You can easily refer that article once if you are interested. And if you move forward in this text and context, I discussed regarding this sterilite uh, problem, but there is one article which is regarding this uh, Maroon Macron. So, this article which is mainly talking about President Emmanuel Macron. Actually, he lost majority in National Assembly in the lower house of this French Parliament. Okay, so because of this, this is the news. And Mr. Macron, pro-business policies and rising of inequality 
and growing of discontent over inflation that are mainly some important reasons for the losing of the support base and president macron's main opposition in the parliament would be would be the left wing noobs coalition which may be led by mr melkan so noobs or this new social and ecological people's union which mainly includes communists socialists the greens and as well different shades of left wing groups that that do not necessarily agree on every issue okay and if you move forward here in this newspaper you can see one article regarding this data protection so here we need to focus on this data protection law in india what is status of this data protection law in india and if you move forward here you can see articles like muslim girl above 15 years they can marry so recently punjab and haryana high court has held that muslim girls above 15 years of age is competent to enter into a contract of marriage okay merely it is done because uh, the petitioners have got married against the wishes of their family members and they cannot possibly the depriving of their fundamental rights and next topic is regarding indo pacific ties i discussed this topic and if you move forward here you can see same sex marriage ban unconstitutional sorry it is constitutional so what happened in japan so in osaka court on monday which may rule that japan's ban on same sex marriage was not unconstitutional dealing with the setback of this lgbtq right activist in the group okay so here this article says that three three same sex couples two male and one female had filed the case in the osaka district court only the second to be heard in this issue in japan so the addition to this the court also threw out that their demands for 1 million yen in damages for this couples and next topic it is regarding uh, challenges in our economy i discussed this topic so these are some important articles that appear in the today's hindu newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture so please uh, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like share and comment my videos So by this I'm concluding thank you so much